Good evening. This is Vlad Dracul, better known as bottom dollar Vlad from Vlad's discount vampire casket facility for big and tall vampires. I am here in our deluxe model. What? What? This is the wrong studio. How did you get me to the wrong studio? Oh, you are indeed a pecker wood. Now you must peck me back up. Never mind this commercial. Okay, you gotta get things set up for the video. Oh, let's see. Hey, who's been messing with the camera? Huh. Hmm. Oh well. Boy, wouldn't it be cool if I started this thing off like I was laying in here like a vampire and kind of rose up and said, good afternoon. Nah, that's too campy. Now we'll just start it out like normal. Well. Hi everybody, it's Robert Earl out here at the Eco Ranch Sustainable Living Educational Center minus Cascade the Wonder Dog, if you were wondering. And he's inside in the air conditioning wondering what I'm doing out here in 106 degree heat. It's a doggone good question. But, we're going to do a video about our second flood bed for the greenhouse. Now, the greenhouse is supposed to earn us a little bit of money. And you know, as I've said before, and I'll continue to say as we move forward in the educational phase of things, once you get your bills under control, in other words, gone, except for those that recur monthly, like um, if you happen to have an electric bill, or like my case, phone and internet, uh, uh, direct TV, those things. But once you get rid of all the other bills, You'll find that, you know, $20, $30 is a windfall to you. You get $100, man, you are a millionaire. So even though we're not going to make a lot of money selling our, our vegetables and um, uh, herbs locally here, we are going to make enough money that it's going to be a windfall to us because, remember, we don't have any bills, we don't have the big fat mortgage, and we're not trying to keep up with that guy next to us in the brand new car showing him our new car, wishing he'd be looking at that while he's over there wishing we'd be looking at his. No, 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 no. We're not going to fall into that, and I'm trying to get you guys not to fall into it too. But we have to build this in order to get that little bit extra income. Just that little bit extra. So this is a flood bed. It's going to always have the water in it. It's going to, water's going to come in one end, go out the other. I'm going to have, it's sectioned off, I believe, into 12 two-foot by four-foot sections where we're going to grow our, um, our herbs and vegetables, and we're going to grow them so that every week we have a section maturing for sale. Also going to have three sections that are just for us to grow tomatoes and long-term things like that in that that won't be a part of. So we'll have the main flood bed that's eight feet by four feet, and we have this one that's 8 feet by 12 feet, and that's the one we're working on now. Now, I'm just going to, go to point out, because it's, it's, we're ready to put the liner in, and Debbie and I are going to go ahead and put the liner in. But what, what I've done is I've put down a good solid base set in concrete of 4x4s uh, and a couple of pieces of old utility pole. I will strongly recommend that you not use pieces of old utility pole, because you're going to have that smell of creosote, and I don't know how long it's going to last. My mistake, but I've got it now. So it's stable, it's completely level. So what we have is we have a two by six frame with two by sixes every two feet along the bottom and then we have another two by six running the full length that's supported in the middle to handle all the weight of the water. And I honestly forget what the water is going to weigh. It seems to me it's pretty close to a ton. Uh, so we do have to have quite a bit of support. So we have the 2x6 here that's the frame. Then we have the plywood. Then we have, this is not a good example. Hopefully you can see this. Then I have two pieces of, uh, three pieces of 2x6. Now, over here, the reason this isn't a good example is we ran out of wood and I used some scrap 2x4s um, in a couple of spots that aren't super visible, like this end here, which will be growing uh, vegetables. But it's completely, it's, it's, it's within, it's within about that far, so three, six, uh, three eighths of an inch of being completely level all the way around. 
but we're not filling it all the way to the top with water anyway. The, uh, the flood bed, the styrofoam is going to go in here and we're going to set it so it's a bit lower than this. So it doesn't really matter even if it were an inch out, but it isn't, it's pretty close. It's just under three eighths of an inch out. So um, what we're going to do now is Debbie and I are going to set the liner and we're going to put some water in it. I'll be filming this, but I'll be cutting little, I'll be cutting it so it doesn't last forever. And then once we get that done, I'm going to tee into the plumbing over here that's going into the main garden now. Bring the tee over to this corner so the water will come in this corner and the outlet will be at that corner. Now I don't believe that you can see from where you are, but the water is coming out from the one uh, right now into the, um, into the ornamental water garden. This is going to do the same thing. So there won't be only, um, well, there won't be any obstruction to walking around the whole thing so we can service the plant. So I'm going to get Debbie and we're going to get going on uh, line. Very high. <laughs> enough to do one more line, one more bed this size with this extra down here. Three and a half gallons a minute, it's going to take a long time to fill this thing up. And like Debbie said, before we even use it, we might as well use it like a swimming pool, but you don't get to see that. <laughs> but uh, I'll come back when I've got quite a bit of water in here. No sense leaving this thing on. I'm going to edit it out anyway. Well, as you can see, Debbie and I got quite a bit of water in here. Um, it's the end of the day, though, because it took forever to put the water in. It's already five o'clock and Debbie and I are both tired. It got up to 112 after all. We were predicted to hit 106. And with the, uh, the way the light was pouring in here for a brief time, the greenhouse got up to 118 inside. Uh, but that's because I don't have any airflow working right now. I will when we get the walls and everything up. But for now, it won't only be a few seconds for you, but it'll be tomorrow morning. We'll finish this project up and get it loaded with plants. 
Well guys, a day has gone by and I've got everything hooked up and connected, but, 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 there is a but. First of all, let me show you a little bit. I can point from here. You can see above me the pipe that's going into that end of the, uh, of the float bed. Now, as it turns out so far, I was able to direct that pipe and angle it in a way that was able to split the water flow between the two beds. So I'm getting an even water flow between the two, which is nice. Now, as I, uh, when I put, I also got real optimistic and I put all my styrofoam in and started planting. I've got some of my commercial plantings in here. However, we developed a leak. The leak was on the outflow. Now, I've said this many times before, you know, so many people that are doing uh, YouTube videos, especially those that are monetized and trying to depend on, you know, YouTube videos for their sole source of income, they won't show you their failures. Well, I'll show you my failures. I'll show you where I screwed up or I'll show you where I've done something half-assed um, so that you know and you can make a conscious decision down the road on it. So I want to show you where the leak came, where the leak occurred and how I'm going to fix it because most of, most of you would think you'd have to take all the water out and replace the entire liner. Well, we're not going to do that. We're going to see together if my fix works. But let me get behind the camera and I'll show you where the leak is and what I'm going to try to do to fix it. Now, it was definitely a leak coming from the outflow tube. The outflow tube came through here, connected to the, um, that elbow, and then just went out together. You can see I've got a cap on it now so that no water can come, uh, come, up, come into this garden. But um, I had to cut it off and remove the, um, uh, remove the fitting. Now, I also had to drain the water down below the level of the fitting. And I'm going to see, tip this up and see if I can see it at the same time. I cut, like I did on the other one, a little X in here but apparently something happened right here where we got a rip right there and it doesn't look like much of a rip but that rip was enough to let water come through under the pressure that the weight of the water had so um, there's the problem now how do I without replacing the whole liner yet what do I do uh, so what I've done is I've cut the fitting as you saw down here I've cut the fitting where I can still repair it and reuse it uh, And I've taken the water level down. I've just siphoned the water level down and as I said down here I put a cap under the um, on it so that no water is coming out So let me show you what the repair is going to be. Well, first of all, that looks like a mess and it is it's it's um uh, it's not worth using for the purpose it's intended, but as a repair for us today, it should work. Uh, this is a sticky tape, uh, waterproof uh, sealant that goes between the panels of the um, of the roof, uh, the roofing tiles. So you just you put it between the on the high ridge where they connect, and that waterproofs and seals. What we're going to do is use this behind that hole that uh, has to be patched and I'm going to I've created this patch here notice there's two holes we're gonna fold it pass it through here and make sure that the sticky tape sticks all the way around and to hold this so water can't pass through and we'll see if that will work Remember, there isn't any real pressure, just the weight of the water. So let's give that a shot, and I'll come back uh, when, I've, when I've done that, and we'll test it together. Okay, let's check out the repair. It's getting ready to uh, drain. First of all, you can see it's just about ready to drain. The water levels come back up. Now, any drip at all along in here... Well, actually, any drip from there or anything along in here would be a fail. So it'll be a few more minutes. Let's wait and see. So, hey, guys, what do you think? Should we take a look at it? I've done everything I can do to fix it short of going to the next step. And the next step would be to take the water out, about half the water out, go get some Flex Seal and spray it with Flex Seal. 
That would be the next step, and the final step would be replacing the lining. But let's not go there. Let's see where we are. I'm going to turn the um, air pump off so you can hear me talk, and then, uh, then we'll get a close-up of it from behind the camera. You know, that's one of my objections to um, uh, an aquaponics setup or even a hydroponic setup is how noisy it is when you go in there. This is supposed to be my sanctuary, not a... So, um, I'm trying to make it as quiet as I can, but I can't quiet that air pump. Now, shall we take a good look here and see what happened? Notice the water's coming out. It's not quite 50-50 right yet. Now, I had to uh, glue these fittings together. At first, I wasn't going to glue them but they were letting some water leak right down here, and that's why that's still wet. But, we fixed it, or I fixed it. No more leaks, so I can go ahead. Now what I'm going to do is get this set up, and let's put you guys back on the stand. Well, I can't see that teeny little screen from here, but I looked and I know you can see me. What I've done now, now that it's up, I still have to, and I'm not going to do this in this video, but I still have to roll the, um, the liner up and I'm going to put some thin little strips on top to hold it in place rather than staple or screw because that can tear easily. But I'm going to put the strips on top, you know, strips like this with like three screws. That's, um, that'll hold it better with less chance of ripping. So that I have to yet finish and I'll do that and you'll, you'll see it in a future video. What I've done here is this can hold 12 2 foot by 4 foot um, styrofoam panels or it could hold three four by eights. The problem with the four by eights is you can't move them around. So what we need to do is we would take this one here and plant it out in seeds or seedlings. Now I still haven't worked out whether I'm actually going to do the seedlings in here or uh, whether I'm going to start them somewhere else. I do have the starter thing, uh, the starter plugs starter trays coming. But what I've done here is I've got these old, uh, you can see there, um, they're 10, 20 um, flats, but they have holes in them. What I've, what I've done is I've taken two 10, 20 flats and sandwiched a piece of cardboard between them that I can keep the cardboard wet, which will keep humidity underneath in here. So I have humidity on the top and then the water from the bottom. Uh, what that should do is, is hurry up the um, germination process so I can germinate the seeds right in the tray. So what I'd like to do ideally and what we're going for is we're going to germinate this is one week's worth of plants for sale. We'll germinate them in here and then when it's time for the second week I take a tray that I've already harvested from or in this case one that has never been planted come down here and push it all forward and drop this in with the new seedlings so that by the time that the one now uh, by the time one of the two by four pieces gets to here and I'm ready to plant it out I've got a five five it's five right two four I've got a six week old plant that ideally is ready for me to harvest and sell uh, I have an I have orders for as many as I can deliver it's just a matter of it's six weeks, are they going to be like this, or am I going to get them up here where I'd like them to be? So we'll see. If six weeks isn't enough, I have three more weeks here. One, two, three. So I can go as far as nine weeks if I want to with them by simply just moving it, and then that would be the, um, that would be the week that's coming out to harvest. On the end here, I have three, three two-by-fours that are four-inch uh, net pots. Those are for me to plant out bigger things for Debbie and I. Tomatoes, squashes, eggplants, things like that. Whatever can grow in here. And I don't know if you can see or not, I've got some really wilted looking tomatoes. I saw a guy that claimed he had uh, rooted tomatoes by cutting off the, uh, a sucker and sticking it in water. Well, I tried it. They didn't get any roots, so I put them in, uh, I, I put them in the net pot. Well, three of them seem to, be doing, uh, seem to not be dying. One and the fourth one did. Uh, so uh, we are ready to go commercially with this this setup. Uh, I have room for one more on the other side here, and I'm going to do a, um, um, I don't know what to call it. I've heard it called different things. I was going to do a flood and drain bed. I don't want to do a flood and drain. I want one that's got a constant flow under it. 
but it'll be all uh, all the expanded clay media, so I can put something that, that for example, ginger or galango, um, anything that grows really big underneath that, would, that, that of course, the net pot couldn't contain. And that, we're, we're going to put that over here. So pretty much the whole inside of the greenhouse is going to be these media beds uh, with a little area right down in front of where you are for planting in the ground. Uh, things like potatoes, um, um, perhaps my onions, tomatoes, onions, and whatever else I think of. So anyway, that is this bed ready to go. Of course, the greenhouse has to be finished. I have to get my window glass in. But for now, we're ready to go. We are growing. I'm going to go in and plant um, uh, 40 plants uh, to fill up that, um, that piece of styrofoam I was picking up. No leak. I hope this helped. I hope you um, got an idea of how I did it. Now I'll give you the cost before I end this because you know you are going to people are going to wonder what the cost is. These sheets here, four by eight inch and a half sheets, they're thirty three dollars each. There's three of them here. That's a hundred bucks. Then I've got my uh, two by sixes. I did use some scrap as I said at the very beginning, but with the two by sixes, the two by fours that um, that I um, had to buy to make the bed here and the plywood, I have another $300, 200 tied up for a total of 300 Then you've got the liner. The liner was only um, uh, about uh, $35 um, for, for this liner. So let's just figure I've got, uh, by the time you figure the screws and that, and the plumbing, figure I've got $400 in this. It can certainly be done a lot cheaper, a lot cheaper. But I needed something that was going to be semi, that was going to be permanent, something I could use commercially. And remember, I'm 66 years old, so I'm building for the time when I start to slow down. 85, 90, 95, when I start to slow down a bit. And I probably can't, you know, bend over or can't uh, toss things together. Um, Oh, I don't want to use the term haphazardly, but just kind of throw things together. So I needed something permanent. About four, about uh, 300 and whatever I said. I forgot. Anyway, I haven't forgotten you, and it's time to let you go. So until next time, it's Robert Earl out here at the Eco Ranch Sustainable Living Educational Center saying, see you later. Vegetables indeed. This is a waste of a perfectly mediocre good vampire casket. What a peck of wood.